Hello, my name is Laurent Garossi. I am a head of neurology and neurosurgery at Davis Veterinary Specialist. And today I'm going to talk to you about vestibular disorders in dogs and cats. Vestibular syndrome is not a disease entity. It is actually a group of conditions which all have in common to affect the vestibular system. And the vestibular system is simply the system responsible for the balance in dogs and cats. As we're going to see, there are a number of conditions which could cause vestibular disorder. The vestibular system is an essential system for dogs and cats as it is responsible for the balance. Simply, the way it works, you've got sensor in the deep part of the ear, called the inner ear, and the job of this sensor is to detect at all time the position and the movement of the head. You've got then a control box at the back of the brain, and this control box will adapt the position of the eye, the position of the body, in relation to the position and the movement of the head, as informed by this sensor in the inner ear. Vestibular syndrome in dogs and cats can usually present with a head tilt, a loss of balance. The animal, if there is very in balance, may fall to one side or lean to one side when trying to walk. And you may observe as well a flickering of the eyes from side to side or up and down, which is called a nystagmus. The underlying cause of vestibular disorder very much depends whether or not the problem is affecting the sensor in the deep part of the ear or the control box at the back of the brain. What are the causes that will affect the sensor at the back of the ear? The two most common causes are a deep ear infection, what we call an otitis interna, which usually is secondary to an infection of the middle ear, but also a condition called idiopathic vestibular syndrome. Over less common cause that could affect the deep ear would be a tumor or potentially a trauma to the head itself. Disease that will affect the control box at the back of the brain could be either an, an infection, an inflammation of the brain, what we call an encephalitis, potentially a tumor, or very rarely in dogs and cats, um, a, a stroke. The most common cause of vestibular disorder in dogs and cats is a condition called idiopathic peripheral vestibular disease. This condition means that there is no known underlying cause, it's very similar to vertigo in human, and usually the diagnosis is made by exclusion of all the other causes. So with idiopathic vestibular disease, it will be normal for all the diagnostic tests to not show any underlying cause. Vestibular syndrome is first of all diagnosed clinically. It will be important for your pet to be examined to try to determine if the problem is most likely affecting the deep part of the ear, also known as the inner ear, or more likely to affect the control box at the back of the brain. Depending on that, your vet may advise if he suspects a problem with the ear to first of all have a good ear examination. He may want to do x-ray of the ear to check for an infection or potentially send you to have further tests including an MRI scan to investigate a deep ear infection or potentially something more sinister. Disease affecting the back of the brain are best investigating using advanced imaging and in that case MRI scan as well as other tests like a spinal fluid test or blood test to check for possible underlying infection. The treatment of vestibular syndrome very much depends on what underlying cause has been identified. So for each possible cause, there will be a number of treatment options that your vet can discuss with you. And obviously, the underlying prognosis will very much depend on what has been identified by doing further tests. The prognosis of vestibular disease, again, very much depends, like the treatment option, on the underlying cause identified. Sometimes, unfortunately, there could be permanent damage 
to the inner ear where you got the sensor of the balance. And despite treatment, the animal may not recover. Fortunately, um, for most underlying cause of vestibular syndrome, the animal will recover given time. However, some animal may be left with subtle balance deficit or potentially a permanent head tilt. Now, with the most common cause being idiopathic vestibular disease, although the presentation is usually very dramatic, sudden loss of balance, head tilt, flickering of the eye, most animals tend to recover within anywhere from a few days to a couple of weeks. Thank you for listening and I hope this presentation has been useful.